<clears throat> I'm just going to roll from the previous episode's topic right into this one because there's a lot of overlap. You know, the theme of it's just a it goes along with it's just us finding a way to lower other things while raising ourselves and using intelligence, measuring our intelligence against other creatures is another way that we do it because you hear all these studies about different animals and learning about their intelligence and it's used a lot of times to try and persuade people that we shouldn't be torturing them the way that we do <laughs> and I don't know how effective that's going to be because we shouldn't be torturing things in the first place you know whatever excuse we use in our minds to tell ourselves it's okay to treat living creatures that poorly you know you'll I mean that's absurd so you'll probably cling to that absurdity rather than listen to a study I mean what inside of you truly believes that the stupidity of an animal makes it not suffer? What if we applied that to humans? You know, are we, are we just going to use IQ scores to determine how much pain they can experience? Do we get to torture stupid people now? Because they're not intelligent enough to experience the pain? What the hell does intelligence have to do with pain <laughs> uh, I mean th that's really I, I know I sound stupid saying that but that's really what we're saying isn't it w what is the point of these studies and then talking about you know how we poorly we treat animals I would love to see humans try to get away with torturing humans based on their intelligence levels and then publishing those results. I'd love to see you try and get away with that. And these studies come out all the time and I just want to, you know, make fun of them by pretending that I'm a scientist and say, well, you know what? It's funny that you conducted that study because I just spent the last 10 years conducting a study in which I tortured animals and the results turned out that they weren't enjoying it. Who knew? Great minds think alike, I guess. I mean, that's the same thing as studying an animal's intelligence and realizing that they can feel pain. Well, what if you just start the study by hurting animals and observing their reactions. What the fuck are you looking at that indicates that they are not experiencing the torture you are inflicting on them? I've been in this game for a long time now, this battle, maybe you should say, and I started with sharks, you know, a fish, uh, animal that is widely hated and feared and it's underwater it's out of sight out of mind and we as intelligent humans again seem to think that well it lives underwater it must not um, have any of the same characteristics that we do <laughs> we can we can hurt marine mammals and fish because well they live underwater that's that's real that's real smart people good god uh, it doesn't look like me. <laughs> now that I've worked on projects in which I try to save land animals, um, the futility of trying to save sharks is really in my face because the excuses that the, quote, most intelligent species uses to continue behaving in absurd and cruel ways towards animals that are closer to us by a long shot than sharks are and the damage that we're causing to our own habitat you know right here on land much less trying to get people to appreciate what's happening out in an ocean that most humans haven't even visited before you know it's 
it's not uh, it's not too encouraging when the screams and cries of a mammal that's lived its life in misery and then is being dragged to its bloody death only results in the most intelligent species saying, Mmm, bacon. Mmm, cheese. <laughs> that's, that's our comeback. That is the most intelligent species comeback. Hey, we can do it. Therefore, we will do it. Every now and then I'll catch a BBC documentary or see a new article that comes out in which was highlighted this just incredibly complex behavior demonstrated and caught on film by talented filmmakers of animals that people haven't even heard of before, much less taken time to appreciate. And the intelligence that is displayed by these animals is undeniable. And so many people turn around and say, oh, I never knew. Oh, I never knew. How could you have? Okay? You, seriously, we start with this preconceived idea that because we're humans and superior that, well, we, we know everything, right? What do you know? What do you know about this planet? Look at what our lives revolve around. And, you know, I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of discussing how purposeless our current existences are. You can value your day job as much as you want to and value your commuting and sitting in an office and driving your car and not really knowing an existence outside of those three things other than your children if you reproduced. So there you go. That's what you're familiar with and whatever you can see on your iPhone that's in your face all day. How do we turn around and be like, gee, I, I never knew that about this animal in Madagascar. Of course you didn't. You, you barely know anything about the dog that you're ignoring in your backyard. So how many of these documentaries have to come out? How many of these studies have to come out in which we always turn around and be like, wow, that's blowing my mind. Before we realize that applies to all of them. And we've just never been paying attention because we think we're too superior to pay attention to other creatures. What if that's the whole point of us being different? Maybe our superiority, if I take a moment and agree with you that we have superiority in some form, what if we're meant to use that in a positive manner rather than an excuse to destroy everything that is amazing? It's kind of like uh, growing up in uh, grade school, junior high, high school, however long bullying in your life may or may not have taken place. You had the insecure guys who were bigger or from uh, higher grade levels that would come and pick on smaller kids. And you also had some really cool dudes who were physically superior and chose to be nice. Human beings are the first one. We have an advantage and we use that advantage to be assholes, to be bullies, to basically helpless little nerds, which is what the rest of the planet is when it comes to comparing them to us because we have all the technology, all the weapons, all the tools, but most importantly, the desire to be pieces of shit. I think that's what nature's biggest disadvantage is against us. Is it just can't comprehend our violence. Yes, animals kill each other. They kill each other when it's time to kill something in order to survive. But it's like you look at human behavior and we're just like inventing all the time new ways to be pieces of shit toward other creatures and constantly engaging in being pieces of shit toward other creatures. That can't be what a superior species uh, is destined for. Please tell me it's not. Please tell me we can do something else with our superiority than hurt things that can't defend themselves against us anyway. There's definitely a sliding scale in 
how we treat animals or are comfortable treating animals based on our familiarity with those animals. You know, you go with uh, a mammal, uh, something that resembles us, and then go the other direction uh, toward a fish, something very different than us. And really what we're talking about is an animal that we've spent time with versus one we haven't spent time with. You know, it's hard to appreciate something for what it is if you're not spending any time with it or observing it, getting to know it. You know, in the case of a fish, the amount of time people spend with a fish is the amount of time it takes to uh, pull it off the hook once you've removed it from the water. Or, let's say, maybe an aquarium is another scenario where you would see a fish. And, you know, you're already in the mindset of, hey, this thing is here to entertain me while it swims in a circle. I don't know how much appreciation you're going to get for it. Um, but it, it really doesn't matter, you know. We can talk about trying to get people to sympathize with a fish all day, or we can acknowledge that as soon as we want to be... <sighs> Let me try to not curse so much. Um, as soon as we want a justification for treating a certain animal in a certain way, we will come up with that justification no matter what that animal is. How about a whale? How about whales and dolphins? You know, some of the earliest animals that you heard studies about their intelligence levels. And you see plenty of videos of mother whales with their babies and dolphins with their families and doing all kinds of complex social behavior things that uh, should make us uh, sympathize with them or relate to them. And as soon as um, someone talks about economics or culture or whatever, it's immediately okay to harpoon a whale or put out gill nets that catch every swimming creature that comes into contact with them, including dolphins. And it doesn't stop there. Dogs, dogs, the animals that we love. People are so afraid of the word culture that if you're talking about loving dogs and how intelligent dogs are and how special dogs are, then that same person, when confronted with cultures that actually torture dogs as part of a tradition before eating the dogs will cower and say, oh, well, you know, that's their culture. I respect that. that no, stop. Take a stand. It's, it's not respectable. And it doesn't have to be just about dogs and any of the countries that engage in what I just described. It's anything. You know, I think you could uh, turn that uh, microscope on us here in animal agriculture. I mean, the stuff you find in animal agriculture is the stuff that you would only find being done to humans in a Saw movie, some horror movie, and, and it actually exists. That's what we do to animals all the time in mass quantity because we found a justification for it. So I, I ask how quickly you try to, when you see something horrifying, how quickly do you start to find an excuse not to feel bad about it so that you can continue down that path versus immediately saying, okay, that's bad, it shouldn't exist, and I should have no part in it versus saying, well, here, that's bad, but here are my reasons. Here are my reasons. I get that's uh, I guess that's a disadvantage of human intelligence because we can talk ourselves in and out of anything, even if it doesn't fundamentally make sense. And the rest of the planet suffers tremendously because of that. Here's to human intelligence.